Hello, I'm Robert Goff. I go by Captain Mavic. And who doesn't like free stuff? I do. Well, on this video, we're going to talk about how to download and install the liftoff simulator on your computer and using your RC controller to fly your quadcopter on the computer. So, first of all, I want to say welcome to all the 300 plus new subscribers to my channel. I owe a big thank you to the RC sailors. Nate and Andy are dear friends of mine, and I would do anything to help them or anybody, any of you in this RC community. That's the thing I think is so amazing about this community is, one, you get away from your computer. You get out there and you get to socialize with real people and fly and be out in Mother Nature. It's just amazing. Um, so I have my notes up here, so I don't want to forget anything. Um, with all the RC events I attend, uh, I'll be putting out one new video every week, and it's going to vary on topics from RC events, FPV flying that I do on my quadcopter and airplanes, uh, tips and training, doing full-scale aviation or RC events I attend, or even flying uh, airplanes both outdoors and indoors, you know, since now the winter is coming, so it's indoor flying season coming up. I want to reply to all the comments that you have left on my channel. But getting 333 subscribers in 24 hours is a bit overwhelming, so it'll take me a little while to get you to get around to all the comments. So, let's talk about how you can get your own copy of Liftoff Simulator. So, what you want to do on your web browser, and this works for PC as well as Mac, is you want to type in steamcommunity.com. Brings you to this page here. You want to join Steam. Uh, many of you probably already have it because it's an online gaming uh, platform and there's lots of games that, that are out there that you can download. And once you've joined the Steam community, then you want to install Steam and it has various options for, again, Windows or PC or I think maybe even Linux. Uh, but anyway, go ahead and install it on your computer. And uh, basically on my Mac, um, this is what it comes up as. Uh, I've actually downloaded the Drone Racing League simulator as well as Liftoff. So coming November 8th through 10th, you should be able to go to uh, the Steam application that you have and go to the store and search for Liftoff and download it for free. So once you download it, you're going to have to set up your RC controller so you're actually controlling uh, the game through your controller so it becomes very familiar so once you actually go to fly a real quadcopter it feels pretty natural. So let's go ahead and launch liftoff and see what it's all about. Okay so this is the screen that you get once you start out and uh, one of the things you want to do is you go under options and controls. So now you want to set up a controller. So actually, let me go ahead and plug in my controller. So one of the things I was going to do is actually show you how to set up on your controller. But then I was reminded that the Steam and Liftoff community is a wealth of knowledge. So what you want to do is go to Community and Guides. And then under the Guides, you're going to find a whole bunch of tutorials on how to hook up your Spectrum, the FreeSky, and Turnigy, all kinds of different controllers. So go through here and uh, find the controller that you're going to use with the game, and uh, the tutorial should help you set up your controller. So now that you've got your controller set up, turn mine on. And so it's basically as simple as plugging in your USB your computer and then on the spectrum radio you're going to have to probably have a special cable that goes to the eighth inch uh, jack on the spectrum radios but on the free sky you have just a USB connection so once I plug it in then I do it on this camera here you are presented with two options USB joystick which is what you want or USB storage and you use the USB storage if you want to talk to the computer and download uh, the OS systems to uh, uh, talk to your, your radio. 
So I'm going to select USB joystick. And then one of the things that just popped up is the, it said uh, joystick detected. So at this point, you can then go to controls. So let's go ahead and start the calibration. So I'm going to rotate all sticks around. Like that. Okay, and center them. And we assign the throttle. So I'm going to move the throttle up and it automatically whatever channel you have it on your radio it'll pick it figure it out which one it is and assign it to the controller on the game so now you want to do pitch so move the pitch up and then center the control now do the roll so move it to the right and let it center again And finally, yaw. So just move the yaw to the right and let it center. So that's it. So now, as you move your joysticks, so if I do pitch, pitching forward, pitching back, roll to the right, roll to the left, throttle up, throttle down, yaw right, and yaw left. So everything looks good. So I'll go ahead and save. Controller is saved. And exit. Okay, so getting around liftoff. Um, so we've already calibrated a controller. Um, if later on, if you want to download some other tracks, uh, there's tracks that comes with it. So I would try those first and then uh, expand from there. When you want to search for the RCS Fest track that I created, um, you can go to Community, Workshop, and enter the workshop. And then over on the right hand side is a search engine. So just type in RCS space Fest 2019. And boom, and there we go. So RCS Fest 2019 version 2 is the track that I created and it has both the beginner and advanced track on it and then the rookie version 3 is actually when you go to race with a time um, that's the track and advanced version 3 is the track for the advanced racing. So just go ahead and download all three and how you do that is basically you click on this plus and you see a little check mark there and saying you are subscribed to this item. So just do that for all three. So to start out, um, you want to select single player. And if this is your first time in it, I would highly recommend going through the tutorial. So just tutorial, get, hit getting started, and the first flight and so forth. So it goes, you, goes through and tells you how to... Uh, uh, fly a quadcopter um, and then gives you some basic gates to fly around and try to get your skills going. So I started there. Once you've completed all the getting started tutorials then you can go into free flight. So now they call these levels and there's all kinds of levels that comes with it. The straw bale is the beginner. It's the easy course and it has a little description down here and it says skill level low. So I started off on the uh, straw bale for probably about a month just to get used to uh, the way it, re it responds and so forth. Uh, Pine Valley skill levels medium. That's definitely uh, a little bit more challenging. So beginners, I would not go to that. Minus two is a garage, like a parking garage. Autumn fields is, uh, like I says, basically <laughs> fields and trees and so forth in the autumn. The hangar CO3 is a uh, like a shipyard and so forth, so flying things around. It's at night time. The liftoff arena is in an arena there. They have some tracks that you can fly around. Dubai Legends were, is based off of the uh, Drone Racing League Championship that they had. That's a skill level of high. Hanover. I love Hanover. Uh, I was flying in this, and this is a very large course, so you can fly all around... Uh, this and there's all kinds of things to explore. It's really really fun and um, 
probably about a month or two ago, um, I saw some videos on YouTube from Rotor Riot, the various different people, uh, Stingy, Kevin, and so forth, uh, Mr. Steel, and they were flying around a place that is actually the Hanover. I did not realize that Hanover is a actual place in Germany, and to see how well the game made it accurate compared to the actual buildings that were there is just unreal. Lots of uh, programming going into this game. Uh, Paris Drone Festival, the pit is kind of fun. It's just a huge, like a big mining pit. Uh, the green is a big golf green and so forth. You can, lots of things to fly around there. Hall 26 is a new one if you've been using Liftoff for a while. That's uh, also part of the Hanover um, area, but it's an indoor flying section. And uh, Bardwell's Yard. Uh, Joshua Bardwell uh, is a well known YouTuber who uh, is very knowledgeable. He goes by the know-it-all, and uh, this actually is his farm, his, his land, and uh, <laughs> it's the latest track to be added. Um, the drawing board is basically just a, uh, like a checkerboard, and that's where you can just do shapes and so forth, and uh, a lot of people have just created uh, tracks that are quite inter integrate um, in there. Matter of fact, um, back into the workshop community when you're downloading tracks um, look up Bomba uh, he, uh, he must be Asian or something because his skill level and detail to all the tracks that he creates are just phenomenal so just do yourself a favor and download Bomba tracks you'll thank me later okay so to find out the, the track that I created it actually is in the drawing board <clears throat> and then since I went to the uh, community and checkmarked that, you'll see that it comes up here. RCS Fest 2019 version 2. So there's the track. All right. So once you've selected the RCS Fest 2019 track, you come to where you can pick your own quadcopter. Um, so by default, it will start on blueprints and you can go through and then pick out all kinds of different ones that they offer. You can even download tracks. Go to the download that's new in this version. And then once you select one, you can modify it and it will say we'll you save it as a copy. And then you can modify it and change propellers, motors, battery size, all kinds of different things. Once you've modified one, they show up under My Fleet. So I'm going to go ahead and fly the Emax Hawk 5 inch. And then the spawn point, um, so when you create a track, there's always a default starting point zero, 00. And if you actually want to create a track in a different part of the area, say you're, you're trying to create a track in the, um, the hay bale uh, track area then you may want to start it over near the barn or something like that so then your spawn point where you start may not be zero zero um, so you can either choose a default or custom one in my track they're both the same and then you say confirm all right so now i'm started here and by using the up and down arrow keys i can change my camera tilt so when i started out I started at probably maybe 20 degrees or 30 degrees and now I'm up to about 45 degrees when I race. You can see there's the track. So this is the drawing board as you can see it's the, just the checkered pattern. And what I did is I have uh, the starting gate is the yellow path. And then for the first part, I got a blue and red path, and that's for the beginner and advanced. And then after the second gate, it splits off, the blue follows, goes down to the third gate, down the long stretch, to the next to the last gate, and then back through. Go to the right of the flag, left of the flag, through the first gate. 180, go through this, flip around, go through this gate, down the long stretch, 
do that gate, and do the start and finish. So that's the uh, beginner or rookie track. The advanced track starts off the same around the two flags. Through this continuing and then split S over this gate. To here. Through this gate. Back through the middle. There we go. To the right, through this gate, we'll split turn, through this gate, so we'll split turn, through this one, and then finally back through that. So you'll notice that some of the gates in the simulator are rectangular and some of them are oval shaped. Uh, so when we set up the track next year for the actual event, uh, we have five blue horizon gates and five orangish spectrum gates. So what I'm going to do is the spectrum gates are for the advanced course in addition to the horizon gates. If you're doing the beginner rookie track then you just fly through just the blue gates. So tips on flying uh, FPV quadcopters is a lot of it is throttle management. So you want to be rocking your throttle back and forth trying to get it so your quadcopter stays relatively even uh, unless you need to do some dives and so forth. So as you're flying around, try to fly as low as you can to the ground. And as you do your turns, you're going to do quite a bit of yaw as you make your turns to keep yourself... I try to fly within like less than six feet high or so. So just practice, uh, you know, a long time, several weeks or so. Just practice going through some gates and all that, trying to keep in your uh, throttle so that you remain fairly low. Uh, it's quite often, and I did it too, as you go through a gate, it'll just pop up real quick and then you try to line up to the next gate and then go through that and so forth. Because you're, you're nervous and all, so eventually you're going to get it so that you can do some throttle management and keep yourself low just by pumping the throttle sometimes just on certain things. Now another tip that I'll give you is think about uh, downhill snow skiing so if you're going through some gates you got a gate approaching you're gonna start your turn before you get to the gate and then as you are equal to that gate you are already turning for the next gate Does that makes sense so liftoff is quite fun to, to do I find <laughs> I find my lots I find myself spending lots of time on it uh, it is so fun to try and it's fairly realistic so once I fly the quadcopters that I have loaded it in here and actually go out and fly my um, Mojo 230 Mojo it's fairly close to what it feels like so practice during the winter time and uh, impress your friends during the spring when it comes around and say look how good I've improved and hopefully I'll see you at the RCS Fest in the Father's Day weekend Fenton County Ohio see you and thank you for subscribing